the land of dawn, Gani Arashi. Oh, there's only already a little bit of a skirmish early game here, but just close the series out, or will Aura Fire force a game three? Ladies and gentlemen, grab your popcorns. Let's see. Let's see here as we jump into the land of dawn, Gani Arashi. Oh, there's only already a little bit of a skirmish early game here, but John QT is definitely going to have a better time in the jungle. I've been playing the Akai in ranked, and I have to say, I think he's the mo I think he is the most broken hero in the game right now. The the amount of damage you deal, how tanky you are, how good you are in the engages and disengages, it's so unreal. This hero is is really broken. A lot of challenge from side of our fire. Remember. Realizing that High will be on that magic shop as well, so a lot of, I feel like, neutral objectives uh, is going to be um, at a disadvantage for us out of our fire here. Midside Alzura with this Matilda will try to give damage towards Go Divine as well as Face Sugger, but no commitments just yet from both teams. Alzura is playing that Matilda mid. We have seen that with the right items, it can do a lot of burst damage, but only if there's only one individual. So the strategy for Geek Fam will be to go for those picks instead, because in the team fights, I think Alzura will end up playing a bit more of a utility role. Kadera right now is still doing pretty well at going up against Beach, uh, Kabuki on the Beatrix, but Aura is already waiting for an opportunity to try and make something happen. Yeah, we'll see oh, here. Oh, oh. Go Diva stole that creeps away. And yeah, in the mid side, you can see here High and as well as Face Ogre dueling in the mid side. Beloiski with this show actually provides a lot of utility. Remember that Numion Blast also can be cancelled by that Jet Kundo with the right timing. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of things that can actually cancel out the um, the Numenon Blast here. But like I mentioned, Janna's going to have a very, very good time in the jungle as compared to Hai here. But Hai's really moving around in that mid lane a lot. He's trying to get pressure for the rest of the team so that they can actually contest for the turtle, which is already being started up by Janna. Facehugger takes away that heavy spin. Yeah, Facehugger here will have that heavy spin. Beloisky jumps into the mid side, will take a lot of damage, oh. but with that guiding oh. will not be able to survive as the first blood will fall to the hands of Facehugger. Aura Fire manages to reset the Lord now. Will they force a fight once again? Oh, it's going to be very, very risky. Numenon Blast! Numenon Blast comes in, and the Lord will be stolen by the side of our fire now. Janna Cutie will try to escape Ooh. as Luke falls in that Lord Pit. And yeah, Geek Fam just lost in all aspects. Yeah, this time, so Aura actually learned from their mistakes. The mistake that they made in the last game was that they, every single time they went for the contest in the neutral objectives, they only focused on the kills, only focused on the team fight. This time, they went for the team fight, but it was all just to secure an objective. So we're already seeing the progression for Aura Fire since game number one. Sit, and it's been, it's, it's looking pretty good here, Rashi. Earlier in the previous game, though, we did see that they were very content going for the pickup onto uh, Baloisky instead of the objective instead. So with Baloisky out of the picture, there's not really any any real threats from the side of GeekFam, and they are just happy to just take the objective and then afterwards engage GeekFam in that fight with the man advantage. So it's already a lot more solid performance, but we have seen it before, and GeekFam still has a chance on turning it back around as Blazing Duet's already used and three members are on top side. Yeah, Blazing Wit, just to clear the waves here, our fire, they are hovering top side. A good read there by Claude, just to clear the waves with that Blazing Wit to rotate faster. Now, we can see Jet Kundo Blazing with that wave, Dragon will not be able to outcome towards anything. He gets taken down. Oh, this is this is not looking good, especially Ooh. with the damage that's just being dished out. Oh, almost, almost that Beatrix with that oh sniper. My oh my God, Januki UT actually gets oh. caught with that flicker. Numion Blast <laughs> catches to in the mid side, and Janak UT and Elzura falls. And Godiva gets both of those kills. Man, even under your turret, you're not safe up against this composition from Aura. You know, uh, uh, you know when you just look at oh. it. Oh, Wait a minute, fight. Where Dragon connects onto his Kabuki, oh but my actually goodness. that's a mistake. Kabuki providing enough damage onto his Kadira and Geek Fam, they are starting to lose their rhythm here. Again, in hindsight, when you look at Aura Fire's composition, it should be a front-to-back composition. They're playing for the Beatrix, but no, it's a dive comp too. They just go in with the resources that they have. They choose to go aggressively, and Luke uh, is next. Another mistake here, perhaps Godiva. 
is looking for the stun that doesn't really connect here as all of fire they are establishing a very healthy lead here in the first five minutes honestly geek fam has a lot more dive potential and mobility but when it comes to crowd control and burst aura has a lot more in that department so they have a lot more advantage in the early game and they have a lot more advantage when it comes to pickoffs because for the side of geek fam Okay, Cho as well as the Akai can set something up, but who is going to actually do the burst damage? There's not really that much until later on in the game. But we share Godiva gets jumped on. Where Dragon connects onto it, Godiva here heavy spin just to provide enough cover as Godiva will be the right target for him. Yeah, he gets taken oh. down, but take a look at the re engage. Aura Fire, they want more. Is high, gets the jungler. Jana Kitsi falls. At the end of the day, it will be one for oh. one, but never mind. It's wow. Kabuki. The game sense is unreal. Get him out of here. He's using map hacks. Oh my god. Kabuki, that game sense, the instincts. It almost seems like a map hack because of how on point and the fact that he didn't hesitate to just shoot that push down. But every single member from Aura, they are popping off in game number two. 6,000 gold lead in six a minute, minutes of play. That's a 1,000 gold lead per minute, man. Yeah, it seems that two structures will fall here, Arashi. What does this mean? Well, it means that Geek Fam are looking for a play on the other side of the map, though. That won't be working out. Aurafire will be able to pick up one more turret for essentially free. So now with that control, Aura can continue to go for the pick-off strategy that's been using. And now Geek Fam, they're cut off away from their own base. Yeah, mid-side will fall as well. Luke forces <laughs> flicker away from that enhanced chain. Geek Fam, they are getting dismantled. Boys here forced to flicker away now. Or fire looks for a fight. Jana QT takes that recipient. Oh, what HP can he escape this Sorry. one? This nice will not connect as Elzura is there to body block that bullet. And no casualties here, but still all of fire expanding their space. And again, it comes down to again Kabuki getting his comfort, getting his playmaking heroes to actually dictate the game with the help of his team. As you can see, once they get going, they go for these objectives, but they need to secure those early game skirmishes first. Oh. And Man, Aura Fire again. They're just using it so well. Ooh. Ooh. Take a look at that snipe. One bullet. Oh, oh nasty damage there. Forward side of uh, John and QT. And now Fluffy here, being the frontliner, will try to somehow create something. But then again, of course, Aura Fire, they will not forget about the neutral objectives. Situation here, what do you think, Rashi? All right, they just continuously just bursting down the members of Geek Fam. And. You know, if it doesn't get a kill, it's fine because then uh -oh. they can use a snipe to pick it up afterwards and Fluffy gets picked off. Numeron does gets cancelled as well. A lot of resources used on towards Luke. Aura Fire might look for a fight here. Jana oh. QT is oh. somehow isolated there in the mid side, but now Godiva taking that jet. You know, Beloisky, that was a misplay there. And actually, Aura Fire, they are able to somehow equalize, taking one man down. And now they want the mid side. They will definitely get it here as Geek Fam will not be able to to defend that one. We said, we'll see here. Can Aura Fire close this game um, fast? They, I mean, it really does seem like Aura Fire wants to close the game as fast as possible. The fact that they haven't slowed down at all, even though the Lord is not up, even though these neutral objectives aren't up. And again, this comes down to their gameplay, their playstyle, Rashi. They are fine with losing objectives here and there as long as they're able to force these team fights to happen against the Geek Fam. And right now, it does seem as though Aura have so much pressure on the map that Geek Fam cannot even go for any trades. They went for that top side, but Aura with the instant response as Godiva jumps in with a stun. Yeah. Wait, Aura Fire, they just have a lot more crowd control and burst at this point. And the fact that they are 8,000 for 8.5k gold ahead really doesn't help the case of Geek Fam at all. So Geek Fam at any moment, not a single person on their team can actually withstand the damage. We saw that Jenna Cutie on the Akai can be chunked to half HP with a single shot from Kabuki. He only has a read in armor. He does not have enough physical defense to withstand the burst coming in because Aura has just such a diversity in their damage sources. Oh, they really need to stay very, very disciplined though for the side of Aura because Geek Fam still have a chance to come back in this game. The Claude has completed the Golden Staff, now working onto a Wind of Nature. That's going to be the power spike for him because he can now, well, when he gets that Wind of Nature, he can actually go and dive into that back line without really thinking about too much from that Beatrix damage with the Wind of Nature. So it's all going to come down to that. If they are actually able to pull off that kind of fight, enabling 
Chadera on the Claude. He might still be able to come back, but mm, again, Kabuki got the snipe onto Chadera. Chadera might have to back off now. No, he just pops into regeneration, but look at the conceal play. Okay, Luke here trying oh. to find a play. And take a look at this as Clay actually gets caught, and Lord, it will fall into the hands of Jana QT. And now, as you can see, Bloiski, actually the first and only member to fall here, but or a fire. They want blood here as Kadera runs Ooh. with that BMI. And still, or a fire. They lost the Lord. Wow. Beautiful play by Geek Fam. Again, or a fire needs to stay disciplined. They can't really give the space over to Geek Fam to make those kind of plays. And Arashi, we're seeing it here. Or a fire. When they are ahead, they go straight for the Lord. They go straight for the objectives, not really caring about that wave manipulation. The wave was too open for Geek Fam, and Geek Fam knew it. They took the chance and they stole the Lord away. The macro play from Aura Fire can definitely be a bit more effective, especially with, a, as you say, wave management, putting a lot of pressure onto Geek Fam without exactly using uh, heroes, right? So right now, Aura Fire, they still have the advantage, but Geek Fam is looking for plays. Oh, oh we have Dragon Glass on Trish Kabuki. This is it. The AOE in that Blazing Duet will not be able to escape. Ooh. Take a look at Luke in the back side. He will retreat, and Jana QT will force to use that heavy spin to escape. And that engage by Boluiski is just shown that, yeah, the power comes out of our fire is just too much. Again, it comes down to Kabuki. He was able to pop that wind of nature so fast, that reaction time, and the, <laughs> man, get this man out of the game. Kabuki is just styling on Geek Fam right now. Arashi, how fast do you need to be to pop the wind of nature while you're getting GQ Kundo, while you're getting CC'd? I think he must have had an inkling of what's going to happen, right? Now, Geek Fam, go for a play again. High over the target. Engage oh. and two members from Zadavara. Shut it down. And now we have Dragon Connects onto a space under. This is not a good sign for the side of our fire. And now Boloyski will connect that jet kundo. Face hugger falls. Three members now down by the side of our fire. On the other side, Godiva here is being chased by two members. He will not be able to escape as Kadira with that DHS is just able to chunk this man's down. And of course, with the help of Elzura, Godiva One will push. fall. Oh my god! Oh, oh Godiva oh. with the delay actually! Kadira gets one, but Azura gets down as well. Fluffy trying oh. to make the play here. Blazing duets will not be able to have enough damage to take this guy down. Killing spree for Luke. Again, Aura Fire. They had the lead. They had the game. But what do they do? They keep going for fights. Arashi, we were mentioning how crazy that win of nature was. But... They used it. He used it in the fight prior to this, yet they still tried to force something. Geek Fam, very well played by them because they know, they know Kabuki used the Wind of Nature earlier. They punish him completely, jumping in and capitalizing on Aura Fire who weren't disciplined there. They kept going for fights and they kept just being, they, they kept on pushing on the pace. Geek Fam, man, they just understood that, okay, the outplay tools that Aurifier has, the win of nature, the ultimates, the positioning, the control wasn't there. And so we already mentioned that Geek Fam has a very strong, fast dive comp uh, composition, and they do just that. Without any crowd control available to stop Kadera from the Blazing Duet, they just, they just instantly takes out high as well as Kabuki. This is the weakness from Aurifier. They are, for the most part, very, very squishy. Very squishy and now our fire. They're looking for a play here. Fluffy and Hans Chains connects on towards Janna. He will retreat. And with this Lord here, that is now in hands. Can they capitalize on it? Top side needs to be cleared, especially from side of our fire. And yeah, our Boy, fire. Boloyski with a deep conceal will Oof. not be able to connect on towards anyone just yet. A disengage by both teams. But well, look again, look again. It's a disengage for Aura Fire. But Geek Fam, they used that time to actually create space in the bottom side. They cleared out that bottom side, slow pushing it to create more pressure and to have that position in that bottom side. Arashi, Aura Fire now realizing that they've set Fluffy up top to do the same thing. Oh, it's a different spot for both teams right now because Geek Fam, they can't repeat the same success because right now Aura Fire will be a lot more respectful of their burst potential and they won't risk it unless uh, they know Kabuki is in safe hands with crowd control, with protection, and with the win of nature. So Aura Fire, they're trying to play it as good as possible. Geek Fam will need to try and do something unexpected, but at this point, they can only rely on 
the Akai or Beloisky, and you can see all fire, they very much respect the potential for Beloisky to try and make the huge play with the Way of the Dragon. It's the Lord Dance right now. Both teams are just making the Lord move back and forth here and there just to create pressure. Again, micro managing the waves. And it's all going to come down to macro here in this 14 minutes because Whoever has better ma wa wave control, wave manipulation, they will have a an edge coming out to this team fight. As you can see, Geek Phantom slow pushed that bottom side again, getting rid of that mid lane and having that top side pressure equal. This will have this will make Geek Fam have more pressure in this Lord fight. Both teams, they are still dancing around the Lord here. Both teams still waiting for the right engage for the right timing here. Beloisky with that jet Kundo perhaps is looking for a play. Seems like both teams taking this rather patiently here. Exactly. Kabuki is over. Facehugger with the connection there. John and QT is the target. High jumps in immediately, but John and QT with Nuna that habit spin, spin will come in as well. Newton Blast Facehugger puts a flicker away, but now in the back side, actually look, gets taken down, and Kabuki will force oh. the members of Geek Fam to back away with a major bounce, and Baloisky gets deleted. And now it seems like three members runs out of Geek Fam is down as Aura Fire looks for a disengage. Oh my goodness, Kabuki. Buki again with the plays, but look, oh, Aura, they're looking for it. Janna opens up the map. Just opens up the map here. No commitments for a fight just yet. Both teams here. Aura Fire with the edge. They will commit to this Lord. Can Janna QT take the Lord here? Steal it away. Heavy spin connects. Janna QT taking a lot of oh. damage. Oh, no. Blast will not connect, but what? Destroyed. The Lord. The Lord is reset, and ladies and gentlemen, a Geek Fam is able to delay the Lord push. Oh no, Aura made the wrong call. They went to just take Janna QT down to enable the fact that they won't have a contest, but Janna was able to get away. Godiva did not use his flicker with his Noom Blast, and now the Geek Fam members have gotten back up. Aura Fire, they have, uh, their gold lead has been slimmed down to just a 1.6k, and Geek Fam might be able to actually force a fight this time around. Chidera has the purple, has the orange. That's a double buff Claude. That's a double buff Claude that can be a very fearsome with the with the sprint coming up soon, but he gets chunked down by Kabuki. When the dance goes longer and longer like this, Kabuki has more opportunities to try and chunk the members down because again, we talked about the range advantage and still, at this moment, anyone can't really, they can't really just tank damage from Kabuki uh, without really feeling it, you know? Every single time he lands, Geek Fam will have a lot more pressure on their hands, so... This is very much very close. It will come down to who gets the bigger play happening. Belorski can see a play here, looking for the CC. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Guiding win, actually circling Eagle connects on towards the Godiva, will not be committed by the side of Geek Fam here. Aura Fire finally reflects, and now Fluffy looks for a flank. Okay, is this a mistake here? As three members, four members Lord, is in Lord, the Lord. area. But the Lord will be secured by the side of Kabuki as Facehugger with that heavy spin connects onto his one. Godiva gets taken down as well. Immortal Pops. Godiva will not be able to survive. I might be wrong. He gets taken down. As High looks for an escape. Aura Fire there in, in, in shambles right now. It's all Immortals popped. Left and right. High. Fluffy gets taken down. Ooh. And now Geek Fam, they Ooh. will look for the end. Geek Fam in this series might close out the game. They lose the Lord, but they win the team fight. A storyline that we have seen so many times in Season 10, and they will have to defend. They're not going to be able to end just yet with the Enhanced Lord coming down in the mid lane. But Arashi, talk to me. What happened? I don't even know, man. It just happened so, so fast. Aura were just unable to actually withstand the damage coming from Geek Fam. We saw that Kadera only got like half the duration of the Blazing Duet onto the priority members of Aura Fire, but that was already way more than enough. And they just get overrun by the mobility, by the shielding of the side of Geek Fam. So that is exactly what they were trying to go for. Because again, as you mentioned, they were focusing on making sure they get the Lord. Maybe they should have re retreated after getting that Lord and then went for a more uh, advantageous fight. So right now, they just lost the Empowered Lord and it's back to square one for both these teams. But again, if we're talking about that late game, Chadera has the game in his hands with the Claude. If he's able to look for those crazy engages with his blazing Ooh. duet and getting those prior members down with his damage output, then it will mean the game for Geek Fam. Aura Fire's gold lead has shrunken all the way to zero. Now it's actually Geek Fam who picked the pace up. 19 minutes in, it's time to take a look at the items again. Arashi, just look at the Claude. 
full items as well as the Athena shield just in case Facehugger tries to do something about it or maybe High tries to burst him down with his magical damage. But for the side of Aurafire, as you can see, the only real tank member is Lolita and the Paquito, who is like semi-fighter with the Hunter Strike as well. So Kadera on the Cloud can do a lot of damage. They need to start saving some kind of utility, some kind of crowd control to make sure that the Blazing Duet does not land on multiple people because that is the win condition for GeekFam. A lot of winning conditions here for GeekFam and Aura Fire. 30 seconds, 35 seconds to the next Lord. Can Aura Fire now close this, well, this Lord, right? Because last time around, sure, they got the Lord, but actually three members were taken down. That was a, wasn't a good trade. GeekFam manages to hold on, even though the space that they are lacking, but momentum-wise, actually, GeekFam, they are ahead. Take a look at the damage dealt by Axe here. Kadera leading the pack. Followed by four members of Aura Fire. Can they pull it off? Oh, it's taking a lot of damage there. Not a good sign, but Lord Evolved Lord is up now, ladies and gentlemen. I do want to touch on this though, because when we take a look at the damage dealt by Axe, it's actually Chadera leading the pack. But remember, Kabuki actually can deal more damage if he's in range with the Wesker, right? And that's exactly mm -hmm. what enabled them to secure the Lord. It wasn't high, it wasn't Jana QT, but a concealed play up top. Concealed play here, Jana QT will pop that heavy spin for that disengage effect. On the other side though, Luke, here might be caught, but a very good game sense once again. Yeah, Ooh. we'll see. Back again to the point, Kabuki with the Wesker. It wasn't high, it wasn't Janna who stole, who took the Lord. It was Kabuki on the Wesker with his ultimate. So with his ultimate, he's actually able to dish out more damage than a Retribution, and now they've gone full control. Oh, the Lord oh. actually lost, and now Moria Blast will connect onto his one. The Distinguished Sarah, Kadira Sarah. blazing the way to the back side will cause panic here as Gold Diva and friends will actually look for an engage. Well, Oiski might be caught, popped, immortal there, and and now we can see here, Beloisky will not be able to survive. Oh, he gets taken down. Kabuki on the other side. Bump that win of nature for escape, and he gets taken down as well. Two for one now, as the Lord still falls in hands of Aura Fire. Oh man, Aura, I don't think they needed to go even deeper now. Without Kabuki, will they be able to, clear, to secure the game? It's an evolved Lord marching down in the mid lane, but they have a lot of frontliners for Geek Fam and Chadera still alive. Four members looks for the miracle play here. Jana QT will take a lot of damage. He will pop that immortal. No, Luke actually gets taken down here. And now this is looks for the end. But Aura he Fire might Ooh. equalize in this game. A lot of minions here. Kadira gets taken down. Jana QT now might be next, but the base is too exposed. And Aura Fire forced a game three. The equalizer in match one of week four. Again, we're going all the way for a best of.